Woodcraft Magazine Editor-in-Chief Jim Harold is hanging it up. He's one of the most experienced editors in the industry, having been in the business since 1984, and was instrumental in forming the and running rival Wood Magazine for years before coming over to Woodcraft Magazine. He'll hand his duties over to Tim Snyder, who worked with Norm Abram and co-authored the New Yankee Workshop books, and was the editor of American Woodworker. I, for one, am going to miss Jim Harold, mostly because we share something very intimate. That's right, we have the same name. I was born Jim Harold Hamilton, named after both my grandfathers. True story. Just because he's leaving, though, doesn't mean it's over between us. I still plan on sneaking into his house and assuming his identity sometime this summer. I hope his toothbrush doesn't make my gums bleed as much as mine does. Carl Swenson is an experimental woodworker who has worked in many styles, from Japanese temple building to Swiss milk bucket making. He says he's constantly seeking out new challenges, and he's certainly found them over the 35 years he's been working out of his Baltimore basement. His story is an amazing one, and it's told through a short audio slideshow, which I've linked to in the show notes, and I think you should check out. This just in, Snuppy Nubs, that's me, has released eight new homemade woodworking machine plans. These long-anticipated projects have been teased over the last several weeks, and the plan was to release them one at a time as we finish making video for each project. But we're given into the demand for a faster release and posting all eight of the project plans on our website, homemadeworkshop.com. The projects include a shop vac cyclone, a 24-inch bandsaw that fits on a workbench, a downdraft table for sanding that also includes T-tracks on top for work holding applications even when you're not sanding, a cross-cut sled with multiple joinery attachments like box joints and uh, splined miters and, well, you'll have to see it, a homemade table saw fence, a European sliding table that attaches to your current table saw, and a giant workstation that includes an entire shop full of woodworking tools in a small 4x8 space. Each plan includes step-by-step -step instructions, cut lists, photographs, and more, just to make it building easy for anybody. And the proceeds support future tool development and woodworking goodness here and on our website. Well, here's a couple of YouTube videos that have caught our attention recently. Lynn at the Darburn of our channel has been building a lot of hand tools lately. She started out with a mallet, and the last couple of weeks she's moved on to making an awl and a compass. On the top of the compass, I made a round ball to hold on to when you use it. First, I drilled a hole on the top of the holder, measuring quarter of an inch. Secondly, I made a tenon on the lathe, and the tenon fit very nicely on top of the holder. And Alex Harris of This Woodwork has been building a few tools himself. His latest is a rotor spiral cutting jig. And so with that small change, everything seems to be working pretty well now. Don't forget to check out our list of our favorite YouTube channels over at stumpingups.com slash friends. Manhattan-based woodworker and teacher Yoav Lieberman is writing a series of blogs on the marking knife. The first edition is online now and discusses how he uses them for all sorts of important tasks. Marking knives are an essential tool for both hand and power tool woodworkers, and learning to properly use one can really up your game. You'll want to check out this blog at the link below and keep your eye out for future editions. Meanwhile, Graham Hayden has written a two-part series on cheap saws that seeks to justify using disposable hand saws in a world where a premium saw can set you back nearly 300 big ones. He observes that many woodworkers have no problem using a cordless power drill for a year or two and then throwing it away because the battery's worn out, yet they complain that there's waste when you throw away a non-resharpenable saw. The hardened teeth on these saws that make it impossible to sharpen them also keep them sharp far longer than traditional saws. Choosing the right one is important. Graham favors a Danish-made Irwin model. He also shares a lot more about the pros and cons of cheap saws, and he just may persuade you to buy a bargain. Our senior tool correspondent, Mustache Mike, is here to tell us what's new in tools. Thank you, Stumpy. Recently, Woodworkers Journal did a tool test on job site radios. And as a connoisseur of fine music, I was interested to see what they found out. They tested 13 models by seven different companies, including Bosch, DeWalt, Makita, Milwaukee, Porter Cable, Rigid, and Ryobi. The least expensive model was the $30 Ryobi, 
P742, which had a surprising amount of features for the price, including Bluetooth, a USB port, and a three-year warranty, but it did provide poor tuner performance. The most expensive was the $230 Milwaukee M18, which had built-in tool storage and a lithium-ion battery, but was a little too bulky. Their choice for the best was the Bosch PB360S, which was the only radio with a built-in subwoofer and features five outlets for plugging in power tools. If you're looking to buy a durable job site radio, I suggest you grab the June issue of Woodworker's Journal and check out the full review. The April-May issue of Woodcraft Magazine had this tip for a miter saw flip stop. It's made of two blocks of wood and a shutter style hinge. You clamp it to your saw when you need it, flip it down to register the position of your stock, then flip it up and out of the way before making your cut. It's a lot safer than other stopping methods. It was such a good idea, it was awarded top tip in the issue. We've been collecting names for our latest tool giveaway over the last few days. Our senior giveaway correspondent, Mustache Mike, is here to tell you exactly what it is and how you can win it. We're giving away a PorterMate PM7000 fold-up workstation with a retail price of $330. It's absolutely loaded with features, and all you have to do to enter is to follow the instructions in the show notes below the video. Well, that about wraps things up for this episode of Behind the Sawdust. Visit StumpyLumps.com at least once a week so you don't miss any of the woodworking goodness we've got going on there. We have new projects coming out, a complete workshop remodel, and a lot more. And don't forget to help support what we do by checking out our project plans. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. <laughs>